All right. So we have been joining with Python so far too long. Now we need to switch here to uh, easy stuff. Easy stuff. First <coughs> topic that we do, or actually this is the second topic for this is course, it's networking and networking. When we just stay in this is the second topic, uh, maybe three weeks until before Thanksgiving. And after Thanksgiving, we, we do not have enough uh, weeks. But, but I'm going to do rush to cover operating system one week and database maybe a couple of weeks. Okay, so in this semester we spend a little time on database, but sometimes I spend more time on database with uh, uh, Python. So Python can access data and display uh, database returns in a way that you want to display. So you can build a very nice graphical user interface. But you, you have some capabilities already. So today, completely, the first time, you relax, sit back. You don't need the computer. Uh, if you want to lay down, you lay down to the floor or the table, whatever. Okay. If you want to go home, you can. Take a, a <laughs> video at home, fine. Which means uh, no hands on today. Okay? So just relax. I like the class. Does that go for next week too? Where there is, I'm talking about next week. Uh, where there is no hands on, then uh, hands on for high tech, then I get, I got stress also. Because uh, uh, there's no guarantee it works in class, right? Particularly if that hands-on needs to talk to so many different players. If it is working on one platform, then that's fine, right? Everything can be done on one platform. But for example, this guy is doing very well, but uh, uh, some of the Arduino Uno or Raspberry Pi and talk to something else. And then, then uh, uh, although at once it works, there's no guarantee to work uh, at another environment at another time. So, a little bit of stress. But today, no stress. I am happy. Very good morning. Right? Uh, it's not really chilly, crispy, uh, but warm. See your crease? It's a short sleeve. James Austin. It's supposed to be 70. Yeah, 70 today. Till tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow right? Yeah. And Saturday we will we'll get uh, the regular climate back. From, from whom? I don't know. So, 505. Uh, what we are going to do for networking? Three things. Today we will we'll cover a little bit of uh, the network. Very, very broad idea. Uh, some of you may know already. If you studied 335 computer networks very seriously, uh, I don't think you really need Okay. But if you want to refresh, you may stay. And the next week, we'll do uh, socket programming. Okay. Um, so programming. So we'll set up uh, uh, multiple uh, servers, and one server is one server, and multiple other sockets can attack. So we we'll, would uh, play for denial of service. Uh, Real denial over service. Third topic for this networking. 
uh, you, everybody knows already, everybody has experience with the wire shark, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see packets and the content in a packet that is provided by application tool. Can we do that in Python? Yes, we can, right? So packet is nothing but some of the information as it goes through the layer of a network. Information and data or header can be packed continually until it comes down to the, the physical layer and then it uh, shipped out. So it is a packed. So how can we unpack it? So as far as you unpack it, then you can see all the information that you could see in Wireshark. So in programming, how can you unpack? How can you trace some of the data so that you can interpret it? Okay, there's a real programming. That programming is not just a programming running by itself on its own, but it communicates, it interprets with hardware or external sources. All right, there's the third one. So, today, from the very, very basic, what is a network? You all know that, right? So a lot of network. Without network, you cannot imagine uh, a world, right? But sometimes I, I want to go back to, no, that's not the world the way I came from. But historically, maybe uh, twenty or twenty hundred years ago, or that's too long. 200 years ago, and there is no, networking is not really necessary, right? Although none of us are having that uh, experience, but uh, farm, work for farming, and you work only, you work for the amount of food that you can consume. You don't need to produce more than what you need. We, we do not eat much, right? So we don't need to work very hard like you guys wait, right? We don't really need. If you go in countryside, uh, plowing the fields, soils and produce some vegetables, meat, we can raise uh, uh, chickens and kill chickens, <laughs> try <it. laughs> You do not want to, but you want it. You want the final products. <laughs> you do not want to over <laughs> procedures, raising killing, skin off, <laughs> and chop it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> why should I say that? <laughs> From the moon. Because there is no stress. Okay, network. So network, somehow, now, very, very important. Without networks, we cannot survive at all. Um, these days, I'm also happy because uh, I succeeded. Uh, I'm going to show to you uh, uh, evening class. There's also a network. Okay? We all have cell phones, right? Uh, tonight's class is a cell phone uh, wireless communication. Uh, so without uh, without Having this cell phone, uh, we can do uh, how much? How much is this? About 
Yeah. 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 One more? I'll give you uh, 100, uh, 150 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, if you if you spend it, not not 150, okay, but about 100 dollars at most, then then you can emulate just like this. Okay. Uh, So um, networking, network, networking is important. Electronic network enables uh, each individual devices to be connected. Your cell phone can talk to. Uh, sensors, if you have, and your cell phone can talk to the server. Your cell phone can be connected to the internet through Wi-Fi. Your cell phone can be connected to the, another cell phone or your friends through cell signals, right? Not Wi-Fi, but cell signal. You can send uh, your message to cell signals, or you can also send the message to Wi-Fi communication. Your cell phone can communicate uh, with uh, some of the devices already installed on your car, right? Wi-Fi uh, phone system. So your your car has antenna. That antenna may be powerful, a little more powerful than your cell phone. And then, and then uh, your your car has a speakers, so that you can talk and be free. So Wi-Fi, no, it's not Wi-Fi. Bluetooth. Right. Bluetooth can uh, be used. So a lot of uh, electronic communications are possible. <coughs> and your phone also talk to satellites. Well, actually, your phone does not talk to satellites. The satellites send out distributed uh, all the signals so that your cell phone can receive the signal and interpret it. That is another type of communication or network. Human network can also be very, very important, right? So electronic ne network can is very similar to human network. If we know someone where someone who's inside of some entity or organization where you want to get in, then that is the most effective uh, channel that you can make yourself successful. Okay, so this is uh, the networks that we are talking about for our uh, electronic uh, networks. Uh, advantages from networking listed there. So geographical limits can disappear almost. So, so that brings us a great benefit. But at the same time, there is uh, almost unlimited threats from 
all over the world. Hey, Krishna. Thank you. Access to remote data. Of course. Right. Separate uh, client and server. Maybe coming uh, next to a uh, summer, if I am here, then I may uh, give you a special lecture. It's not really lecture, but hands-on. Last summer we did uh, some of the Raspberry Pi. Through Raspberry Pi, we can attack, right? Attack. We set up attack components there. Particularly uh, Kali uh, Linux. Full Kali Linux can be installed on your uh, Raspberry Pi. Maybe we can do, each student can buy maybe uh, four to eight uh, Raspberry Pi. So we will build a uh, cloud computing power. <coughs> so they can of each other. Something like this. Goal is to get universal communication. So anyone can to can talk to anyone in the world. We're almost there, right? You can talk to someone from outside can identify Something happens surrounding me, right? As I talked to last night, some of the class, one of our faculty here in this uh, school, he said that he went back home. He lives in the city. He went back home, and uh, his friend called him, his friend from Italy, and said, what's happening in New York? Terror, right? Night ago. But he didn't know until he got back home, until he got a call from his friend in Italy. So, all connected. So, everything is available. There is no geographical limits or restriction or um, there's no nothing, right? Okay, so network types, a lot of network types. Local area network, wide area network, even narrow body area network, right? So almost all uh, Sensors can <coughs> light sensor, not expensive sensor. Okay. Sensors that we can purchase uh, for the experiment in the college level are all cheap. Therefore, uh, it works only within uh, body area. Or if it goes a little further, then maybe uh, local area. So band, LAN, WAN, and more than that. And all can be connected by wired uh, material, media, or wireless. Networking just like that. Right? It's very old stuff, right? TSL, T1, T3, characterized by. Uh, data rates, a bit rate, bit per second, propagation delay, um, 
here there's no nothing about wireless communication so uh, which frequency of wave can carry your signal the frequency band that can carry your uh, uh, your telephone systems telephone messages uh, it's increased a lot right many many years ago maybe uh, 900 megahertz then it was really really popular and strong I'm not sure you still remember when you were young or when uh, years before you were born Chris 900 megahertz at that time uh, it was really 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 sophisticated uh, uh, the home I mean home phone systems cordless home phone so they said okay you have one base station and four phones cordless phones you can talk anywhere uh, in your home backyard front yard uh, basement or upstairs right I still remember we purchased that about 20 years ago from Sears it was about $200 very very expensive right but heavy one could this 900 megahertz uh, 4G cell phone right now maybe 8 gig hertz uh, band frequency band uh, maybe used 2G, 3G 2.4 gigahertz 2 gigahertz or 1 gigahertz who knows uh, later maybe it uh, frequency band uh, close to x-ray really 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 high frequency band if we have a higher frequency band then, then uh, uh, each uh, frequency band for channel uh, frequency band for each channel could be wider which means you can send more data at uh, a unit time so transfer time transfer rate will uh, be increasing connectivity is not uh, just through uh, one backbone that is why now this kind of uh, uh, topology that you can see here this kind of topology It's uh, uh, it's Ethernet, Ethernet uh, communication. It's a mesh type of uh, topology. can be formed if you are working on a sensor network okay. we call that ad hoc network can anyone communicate with uh, anything else all right so we are not in this class but in another class we will practice that for example five six wireless network. So we have a, a pretty good uh, uh, devices ready for you to use. A simple Ethernet based network topology can be exemplified in this way. So we have a multiple clients and then uh, auxiliary devices can connected to the network for example printers and 
uh, peripheral device like a modem. In your cell phone, you're taking it as a modem component or not? It is a modem. Servers and clients. Basically, there are two ways of uh, uh, of of constructing topology. Okay, switching systems or packet or well, socket switching and, and packet switching. Socket switching is an old technique, still used somewhere. Circuits are circuits so, so physically connected or virtually. The packet switching networks uh, is now widely used. So the message that you want to send can be uh, chopped into smaller size, which means message can be can consist of multiple packets. So each different packet can travel separately. Of course, each packet has uh, all the meta information called the header files, right? Header information, so they know uh, where to go. Once it reaches at the destination, still uh, as it go, goes along uh, the network layer, uh, since each packet contains the information about uh, the packets, so which protocol will be used, which application will be used, that type of things already uh, packed in one packet so that at each level a packet can be unpacked and identifies uh, what to do, how to do. Okay. Whether it toss off to the higher layer of the network or uh, should be managed uh, at that level. So circuit switching like this. Uh, typical telephone networks. Not over the internet, but uh, typical uh, telephone systems. There are uh, switching systems, so switches available. And then we have a caller and callie as you can see in this uh, slide. So first, uh, uh, circuit needs to be established, okay, physically. So many times, circuit switching systems has dedicated lines. So the way that it uh, constructed here is to release the circuit from end to end. So as this caller dials, then there's some number, right? So number dials uh, physically connected to that number goes to uh, the switch which is physically connected. Right? So this switch system knows where it goes uh, from here, which neighbor that can handle uh, that message. So it goes to its neighbor and neighbor. 
So it hops, multiple hops, uh, which to the last two uh, switching systems. And from here, this can connect you to the holy systems. That is the path from here there. Right? And then this guy picked up, then that is connected. So that communicates. From here, can send a lot of data. Right? Voice data, image data, whatever data that you can send. And finally, closed circuits. That we all know. Right? So in the switch box, uh, multiple signals can come in, then uh, for example, uh, time division multiplexing system. So along the time, so each time slot can carry, um, can serve uh, in time sharing fashion each of those partially. So not necessarily one guy should wait long until some other guy, guy uh, complete his service. So somehow time sharing techniques are uh, involved. So so it assumes uh, link capacity there and each communication requires some bit per second and then uh, looking at the link capacity and uh, data rate, then we can uh, understand the number of slots, how many slots that we need to, to serve all those uh, requests. So maximum number of uh, concurrent communication is C over R. So capacity over the data rate. Okay. Then we know maximum, maximum, for example, one switching uh, system can serve 100 uh, clients. If there are more requests than 100, then the capacity, then your call needs to wait. So you can hear BG sign, right? The BG sign is not necessarily the BG on your holy uh, system, but there's a lot of the network increments along the way, in between. So any one of the, those uh, network increments is BG, then, then you can hear the uh, BG signals. So, as I said, what happens if uh, we have uh, more than C over R communications? What happens if the if A, B, A, B, if A communication sends less or more than uh, R bits per second? So, design is unsuitable for computer network where transfer have uh, a viable rate. So. Um, improve the network, right, very simple. Or you have to uh, develop different techniques, different multiplexing techniques. We keep inventing. Internet traffic is bursting. For example, uh, MIT Computer Science and the Artificial Intelligence Lab. There's a signals. So maximum in and maximum out. There's a 12 megabit per second. But there's always bursting because the average in and average out higher than that. It's 
it's not really higher, but if it is, right? But in this case, the capacity is a bigger. This is bigger, right? Right now. It's bigger. It's okay, so that it can carry out. So this green is um, is in, and blue is out. So depending upon time, so is a day daily, right? Daily basis. So during night, this is night time. Right? Is it? Why 20? 24, 22. Okay. How can we read this? Okay, this way. It's not really time. Maybe this is a time. Yeah. So some period, we have a more outgoing and some period we have more incoming messages maybe if this is a, the time then during during uh, work working hours we have more outgoing and very well balanced but Night time, a lot of outgoing messages. Packet switching. Used in, in the internet, data is sent in a packet. So packet has a header. Header contains controlled information. So it should have a source and destination address. For example, so packet can be formed in this way. It has a payload data, and then there is another attachment. It's called the header. If this is produced uh, in, for example, uh, data link layer, then, then it has, uh, for example, uh, some other uh, header information, right? And transport layer, then uh, port information, network layer, uh, destination and and, uh, and source information, application layer, uh, then port information and some uh, specificity required by that application is also included in, in this header. So header file, header components does not contain, not necessarily bigger in size, or it shouldn't be. But the minimum meta information should be uh, described. Therefore, we do not drop any packets in the middle or misdeliver so each packet once the packets are, are generated then packets can traverse separately not necessarily through node 1 but another packet may jump to uh, node 3 and it goes to node 4. Not necessarily two nodes in between, maybe more node. So node 5, before it get into the host 2. As it send out, then all needs to be packed, right? Packing. As it receives, all needs to be unpacked.
พ้แพ้เคนอนมแพ้อ่าแคมป์ไปดอนอินโปรแกรมส์วะเพื่อโปรแกรมส์ไลค์อินอินไพทอนแต่แพ็คกิ้งอิสนัตติงบอทอ่าคอนสตรักต์เอาส์เอ็กซ์ลาสวันคลาสแคนคอนเทนเดต้าอินอันอัตเตอร์คลาสไทป์ Which can contain data in another class and another class. All can be finally in one class. That is a packet. As it data uh, is packed in reverse way, you have to unpack it. Unpack uh, needs to be done very carefully. So you have to understand a little bit of data. Uh, structure. You have to read the data structures of, uh, for example, uh, IP packets or TCP packets, UDP packets. Very carefully, you have to understand. And all in binary. Therefore, you need to read, for example, hey, first the three bits indicate something. Then you need to grab. First, the three bits from entire packet. How can you grab only those three bits? And then that last seven bits indicates something else. So, in the packet switching. Uh, from the sender side, it comes uh, into uh, the switching system where there is a queue uh, in a packet, right? So this guy sends multiple packets. The other also multiple packets and multiple packets. As they are coming in, you can say a queue. You may think of something other. Other data types, but in this case, a queue. Therefore, first packets in, first out. They may sometimes a, uh, a prior, prior, priority queue uh, to be implemented, right? So some of you took a data structures, right? Then a priority queue can be considered. It can be implemented. So you can think. You want to put the priority of what? You want to uh, put higher priority uh, based upon data size, or based upon IP address, or based upon sender address, whatever that is, or based upon protocols. Sometimes protocol is very very important, right? Multiplexing using a key. Demultiplexing. Multiplexing, demultiplexing. Encoding. Encoding, decoding. If we have a multiple. So coding and encoding, or decoding, multiplexing, those techniques are used. In all types of communication, <coughs> here in <coughs> uh, internet-based physical communication, or wireless, Wi-Fi, or cell signal, CDMA, for example, for your cell communication that implemented uh, since 2G system, still that CDMA. Uh, coding techniques used still the same techniques. A little bit of improvement, but still the same techniques. There is no other techniques uh, can carry multiple uh, senders' message at the same time. 
Johnny? I'm curious to why CDMA is a collision detector. No, no, no. no. Uh, code, code division of multiple, multiple access. Code division. Just like a frequency division, time division. You get a plan. Sometimes you ask, you want to stay on the CDMA or you want to go to the LTE? Still, internally, the technique is a CDMA. Well, sellers, salesperson do not understand what you need. Right, you do. So, they don't need to know. Cell phone. Cell phone. That's it. Okay, so the models or layer. Long time ago, maybe 30 years ago, OSI, seven layer, open uh, system, open system interconnections, invented it. Okay. Seven layer. Physical data, network, transport, session, presentation, application, you all know this, right? Physical, this is a physical line. Cable. Everybody can do it, right? Cable. And data, data link layer, network layer. From here, we're talking about port, right? There we can see the socket uh, programming. Network layer, then we have some IP uh, communication information needs to be considered. Destination or source IP. And then in the session layer, because there is a port is, each port can talk to a specific application or specific device. Right? So each application has some session, which means if you have a database, then you have your database is ready to create multiple sessions. So through one port, say James at time T1 comes in, then James has a session. Time T2, Chris comes in, then Chris has a, another session, and another session, and another session. session. Web server also, same thing. If you log in a web server, web banking system, for example, enter your login, password, then you have a session. If you do that session programming, then you can capture hey, which IP, which port, and what time this guy comes in my system. So in your application programming, you can save on your own login file. We don't do that uh, here in this class, right? The session can be done in many other subjects, for example, uh, website uh, programming, PHP, for example. Okay? then you can do this session information. Or database programming, then you can do also. And presentation, then <coughs> above this, we don't really care, right? Here in this, uh, our level. Our level is a little different. Department of Defense also proposed uh, three layer models. So LAN, protocol, and application. And another type of uh, uh, architecture, network architecture is 
is in this way. Physical data and network and transport goes together. Right, they are very, very close, right? You have IP and then port. That goes together. You cannot say separately. You send to a specific IP, some messages. The message cannot do anything. Because port information is not uh, specified. So message doesn't know where, where to get in, right? Your system should open a port. Hey, port number 80. So web users can be in this port number 80. Port number uh, 443. Oh, if you want to access the web using HTTPS, then, oh, you can come in. All others, uh, your application program, for example, MySQL, then when you install, you have to specify uh, the, pop, uh, the, the port number, so that through that port number, you can get in. On the other hand, if as a hacker or uh, cyber security professionals. If you want to do penetration testing or if you want to do hack in another system, then you need to look at the port availability, right? Port may not be open, then, uh, then you, have, you have to find out. Anyway, you have to find out the port. But some systems does not release uh, availability of ports, not by your scan. Then you have to attack all ports. They may be open, but they don't say that it is open. But if you're lucky, then oh, this is open. Okay. Group ports. Group ports. Get in. There's a socket programming uh, next week. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Next week. We do not have, you don't, you don't have to come this early, okay? Sleep at home. Okay, or turn on your blackboard and watch my lecture. I'm going to be out of town for another NSA meeting. As I said, somewhere. Because this is a recorded, I'm not going to Okay, next week, uh, Wednesday. I'm coming back. But I'm going to. This is good. I can I can record my uh, lecture. There's a hands-on. You can set up uh, the server and clients. That's a socket programming, so that you can your server can open some port. Your Client can also have some port. Therefore, through that port, your client message can go out, right? But you need to know where it goes to. So that's over. So of course. So that's next week. Uh, my recording. It's not really long, short, because there is no error. <laughs> you can see it quick. It doesn't mean that you can follow quick, which means you have to rewind, and rewind, and redo, try and error, at home. Sometimes it takes whole day. All right? Right. But if I give you, for example, uh, all implementation, uh, the video for one hour, it could be maybe five hours at your side. Or somebody may unsuccessful at all, but still need to repeat. We don't need. We all know this, right? If you have to send the mail, right, from 
What study do you to SciSecure.org? SciSecure.org is our server running on. So Nick there and Dina is in Mercy and each one has an admin. So you, logically you, you send a message from Mercy.edu to SciSecure.org. Physically they go through in some channel, right? You cannot, you cannot send it directly. It go through somewhere. Okay? Actually, it comes here all the way to the physical layer. And there, there's a switching, right? Switching systems. So we need to know where to go. So each, each switching system or router has a routing table so that that can let it go in any direction. What direction? Maybe through that direction to the physical layer called that admin. And then goes up, right? So a uh, protocol, what is a protocol? Protocol is, is a set of rules. What do you want to do? Can be described in an application. Where are you going? Is addressed in address. What do you get there? How do you get there? That is based upon media type, right? Is it going through the Ethernet? Or is it, is it, is it going through cell signal? Or it goes through Wi-Fi? Or Bluetooth? Or 802.15.4 ad hoc? One of the impl implementation of that is uh, Zigbee. Can, we have a lot, I still have a lot of uh, Zigbee antenna. We used to Zigbee antenna a uh, few years ago, but not anymore. It's not really powerful. So now we do NRF <coughs> 24L01. There's a Nordic uh, system, which is uh, real, uh, reliable. There is also uh, I2 3 802.15.4 communication. That is the media. <coughs> How did you get there? Uh, along, according to the specification in a protocol, there may be some uh, ACK needed, acknowledgement, or error may be checked, or error may be avoided. Or error may be corrected. Okay, as Johnny tried to say, right? If there is a collision, then are you going to avoid the collision, or are you going to detect collision? Therefore, knowing error to and find out resolution. So pack and unpack scenario within this way. We have a source and destination. So at source side and, at, and also destination side, we have put all seven layers needed to pack and unpack. But lot, in between, there are a lot of uh, network equipment built, but they are not really taking care of all seven layers. Some device needs only bottom two layers or three layers, depending upon uh, the functions that they are doing. For example, switch, then only uh, two layer of uh, 
the architecture needs to be taken care of. Router, three layers, right? So in this slide, we talk about switch and router, and then full scale of the source and, and destination. So let's assume at your source side, you, you work on some application program, maybe mailer system, or your web server, or what else do you do? So database, uh, client side. So server is at the destination, and you are the source. Let's talk about anything, anything that you want to send or receive, then that is a message. Let's call it message. So message is created uh, from the application. It is created. So message is a payload. So there's a presentation layer, actually, along the seven layer below. And then it uh, has a transport, well, session layer also. So session, presentation, and application, they're all handled in an application. So when you write an application program, right now we don't care much about session, right? You do not care. But if you want to do uh, secure programming, then you have to. Sesh, you have to handle session layer data. <coughs> Therefore, when something happens, then you plot the session layer data and find out who hacked in my, my system last night at 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. You have to, right? Where, where that person comes from? What IP? Or ham it down. And then, right, kill the packet. Okay, once the message is created, okay, transport layer. The message, if it goes out, then it goes out through a designated port. Okay? On your laptop, when you type on your keyboard, then keyboard talk to your CPU through a designated port. Video screen, also same thing. So port, through the port, then there is a port number, port number as a header to be attached to the message. And goes down to the network layer. Then at the le network layer, then we should know the destination information, IP address. Then that should be attached to it. Datagram, for example. At the link layer, all together called the frame. Frame is nothing but a packet. So packet is now formed. Called that pack. Information can be packed in a frame. Called that packet. Okay. Now packet, packet goes down to physical layer. It should come here, physical. This is physical layer, right? Oh yeah, here. Can you see it? No. Camera is off. You want to touch? It's physical. Oh, so fast. Come on, back up. Watch. Soon as it comes down to physical layer, fish, at the physical layer, there's nothing, not much can be done. The physical layer. Cell signal and, uh, and Wi-Fi signals. 
it has all others, but for wireless communication, we look at only that uh, physical layer and then a little bit of uh, data link layer where there is a MAC information, right? MAC, MAC address. So it comes. Di oops. Yeah. Oh. Back up. Where is it? So much. So already something happens. Just start to be clean. Okay. Come here. This guy was there before. Alright, now it travels. As it travels, come here, in the switch, switch it, then it comes in the physical layer and goes to the link layer. At the link layer, it, this guy knows where to go, right? So it goes, it reaches all the way to the router because they are, switching is nothing but under the same subnet, which can be taken care of this router under the same protocol. It's not really protocol, the network. So, switch has multiple of these, multiple source. So switch, well actually there are eight ports, eight slots available then this connected to another server and this connected to this server. So it goes here. So from this application all the way down, when it comes to this link, to this, along the switch, there's not much it can do because uh, it's the same domain, same domain. So it should reach the router. When it comes to router, then and it says, oh, it should determine where to go. Okay. The switching layer, there is no uh, routing cables. But at the uh, router, there is a router, route, route table. Switch and router can have a firewall installed. Firewall can install anywhere. Firewall can install here in application, switch, router, or separate uh, hardware firewall can sit somewhere here in between or inside this switch or inside this router, as many firewall as you install, then a little more secure, a little more secure. So firewall has also some rules implemented. So this type of packets can be, can, can be allowed to be in or expelled, whatever. So it comes all the way to that router, and the, and the uh, link the layer, then watch this. So one of these needs to be out. So this, uh, by unpack, this guy, take this out in this order. Take, take this out from the link the layer and understand uh, where it goes. So it goes up the network layer, the taken out, right? And go up and it, at this time, this network header needs to be taken out and then it identifies so that it knows, oh, this guy come from that source and goes to destination. 
now I am a router so we have a lot of different paths paths available so decision needs to be made where to go if it is made if it is made then this H1 and that H1 is not the same right this is updated uh, by this router which it take all the situations and variables into consideration and the new ones can be attached and it, when it goes down to back to link layer and further will, will be packed again okay so at the router side router can do a little bit of unpack and a little bit of repack and send out further and further if we have a multiple routers in between then that type of work needs to be done if you send a message from here to London then uh, maybe multiple routers needs to be involved in between right so finally it arrives the destination then back into the, the link layer of the destination then it should be unpacked which means detach this and then understand what it is and send it back to the network and network layer take a, take a look at it oh this is mine or if it is uh, misdelivered then bounce it out if it is in then uh, this network layer uh, toss it back to the transport layer so at the transport layer this guy unpack it and look at it oh this guy wants to go into a specific uh, port so at that time that guy knows oh this port is open okay send it okay push it in through that port if that port is not available then bounce it back to the source then sometimes you may see that port is disabled right port is disabled then you have to wait as far as everything goes well then uh, at the application layer then it can be opened and and do some there okay I wanted to open now a uh, wire shark you know all wire shark right raise your hand you've never done wire shark <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, right? Yeah. Okay. What about the first link? Network source sorcery. Sorcery. Network sorcery. Have you been in that? If you don't, click and take a look at. And when you come back, we will look at this. Okay? So we'll take 10 minute break for breakfast time. So this is the web page for uh, network sorcery. Uh, I wanted to read this web page. Uh, this this is a very very helpful for you to do a packing and unpacking uh, uh, the messages to to communicate to to send out and and or to receive and, and interpret uh, properly the way that you can look at here you can read uh, some others but uh, there's RFC source book if you click on it then we have RFCs and protocols and then there is a IP protocol suites and TCP UDP ports and a lot of port numbers uh, uh, introduced, for example, TCP UDP ports. If you look at that, then uh, more than 2,000 
the ports are already resolved by the system, so you don't need to do. But some other ports, then uh, some. This is a recommendation, and not necessarily right. For for example, Zigbee uh, packets and Zigbee IP transport services, you can set up in this way, right? That that is a port recommendations. Uh, let's take a look. For example, yeah, five thousand. Then a lot more. Telepath attack. Remember that many years ago we have a lot uh, locus uh, discovery. This is, for example, Oracle. Oracle, res Oracle. If you don't change it, then fifty one fifty five. So Oracle as control agent. This is installed that way. SNMP six one fifty one sixty one over SSH SSH transport model. So some of these ports are widely used so that if you want to attack, not asking you to attack, but these are the ports that you can take into consideration, Chris, for example. Don't uh, commit any... Uh, America Online. Uh, some HP servers. XMPP. Microsoft Tor Loader. 5359 uh, web services for devices and Microsoft small business some of the Microsoft stuffs here Some HTTPS for Pearson. Remember that uh, four, 443? That is uh, HTTPS, right? We joked. But 5, 5,000 level. T Mobile, SMS protocol message 0132. Symantec. X509. X509. Okay. 
Uh, this is not what we want to take a look. But if you click IP protocol suites, here uh, you can look at, for example, AR ARP, address resolution protocol, if you want to, uh, if you look at ARP packets to open up, and this is the way it is packed. The size of ARP is four byte long. So this guy tells you what are they, right? Why well, this? It's not four byte long. So four by four byte, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. So so first to four byte, first to two bytes. It's talking about hardware type, and the next to two bytes for protocol type, and the next to one byte. So one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte, and fifth byte, there is a hardware address length, sixth byte, protocol address length, and some opcode, and source hardware uh, information and destination, and finally, some of the data. So if you see here, the first bit tells me that this is resolved, and second bit, oh, this is a value for hardware type value, 16 bit. This is a 16 bit. If you identify those 16 bits, okay, so you interpret it in decimal number. If it is, for example, uh, 29, then there's IP, ARP over ISO uh, 7316 through 3. Okay, and another one, uh, ATM. Uh, asynchronous uh, transmission uh, transmission mode. ATM is the one uh, popular uh, protocol invented uh, about 30 years ago uh, at MIT. We thought at that time ATM will uh, override all other protocols, but MIT protocol uh, was not really uh, spread out. So if you click some of this, for example, protocol, protocol type, then you can see by looking at those two byte long data, two byte long, then there's uh, about six, there's a value, that's more value, right? So that uh, you can interpret it. For example, if it turns out to be six, then there's a dropper, a drop, 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 whatever, whatever, right? So this is ARP. Um, and then, actually, this is what we want to do, IP, Internet Protocol. Look at this. Then this is Internet Protocols. So size of Internet Protocols is at least one, two, three, four, five, five times four, so 25, plus Payload. That is whatever that you that's uh, available. So I wanted to look at, for example, uh, first first byte of that IP packet. This is all header. Okay, from here to this light green, they are all header information. And then there is uh, some padding. After that, we have might have uh, this is IP, and then we have uh, uh, TCP or UDP. That's uh, attached. So this is attached uh, from network layer. So first four bit. This is a bit. First of four bit tells us the version, and next of four bit uh, here internet header length, okay, IHL. So your programming needs to take this guideline into consideration.
Okay. So we will we'll do this. We're not going to stay at this base longer. Because this itself uh, may take, uh, I think, several weeks to, to do. But those who are interested in and do have uh, Python skills can handle this completely. So that you can develop much, much more powerful uh, packet data collection than Wireshark. Wireshark is, is just too much, too much in packet information. But by doing uh, Python programming, you can capture the ones that you want to look at. Okay, so put this aside. Meantime, I have right two. I have I have textbook. I didn't post it yet, but I think it is it is somewhere already. In let's take a look if it is available on our site secure.org. SciSecure.org, we have a 505, right? Look at that. Uh, early version of that chapter, yeah, here, textbook, uh, Python network, network socket programming. If you click this, then similar version already posted so this tells you for example how to do network sniffing using your uh, Python programming okay some of the samples here and and also uh, the structure of packets this is the things that we already Watch it through this uh, web server. See here, first four bits for version, and next four bits for IHL, and next one byte for type of services, and so on and so forth. This is for IP header, and then at the same time we have a TCP header and UDP header. So further we can look at, okay, by looking at uh, a, a packet, we can identify which port that packet needs to get in. Okay? So, by knowing that port, we know the application is open to that port. If we know that, then, then our attack strategies or tactic can be determined more clearly depending upon the application programs that we can get uh, idea from these packets and some sequence number uh, acknowledgement number and data offsets and some of the re uh, reserved ones and finally we have uh, <coughs> payload uh, similarly UDP uh, much much smaller uh, less complicated structure of packet so depending upon the protocol you can you can open it uh, differently so this is uh, uh, one of those maybe uh, TCP I didn't do whole a lot but up to IHL okay unpack the, up to that once in order to understand that this we'll get back to this in two weeks but right now I wanted to look at one of uh, the module that you need to import for your Python program, okay, or for your PyVar program, somebody is confused to Python with the Java, so PyVar. Okay, here import the socket and import the struct. 
I want to look at the description of those mod module, uh, Python module, particularly this struct that is important module that you can unpack. There is a method called the unpack. If you see uh, here, struct dot unpack. This is uh, the function then you may be able to see some very funny uh, code, right? Exclamation, bb, hhh, bb, hb, whatever that is. This, this comes from this code. That code comes from the structure of this. Okay? So hp header and tcp header together can be unpacked according to this. Oh, this is a IP uh, pack. So we have a 20, 20 bytes. These are all about 20 bytes, which means this is 20 bytes from here there. Right? From here. One, two, three, four, five, 20 bytes. So this is, this is good for that. Let me see if we have a uh, yeah, new version. I'm going to post new version. Then that version has uh, socket programming itself. Chris, your question. Uh, or are you happy? I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> you are... This satisfaction is my mind. Yeah. Yeah, you, you have to practice. You have to do real coding that you can get a clear idea. Oh, that's useful information for uh, for you to sniff uh, the packets. If you know this, then you can also spoof. Sniff it and modify it we pack and let it go continually. It's proofing. Very, very low level speed. It's proofing. <laughs> so I'm going to put this aside again. And this also. Okay. Saki programming. Give me a, another uh, 30 minutes. So I'm going to introduce to you the sake programming and the next week you can see me on videotape uh, how to implement the sockets in Python okay Reference, uh, as, a, as we looked at, we already have that. And the interlayer res, uh, resolution. Packing for packets. Each layer, longer seven layer, uses a layer below. The lower layer adds a header to the data from the upper layer. Right? We, we looked at that in that uh, small animation of the slide, the previous slide. The data from the upper layer can also be a header on the data from the layer above. Unpack, reverse. IP characteristics. It's a datagram based. Uh, connection lists at this time. So when you go up, go down to TCP and UDP, then we there's a connection based or connection list. Well, clearly unreliable. 
and 32 bit addresses, which is four, four bytes, right? Addresses, logical four bytes addresses. Used. So UDP, so we have IP and UDP. UDP is also datagram based. That is definitely connectionless, unreliable, application usually uh, message based, no transport layer retries, application handles ignores. Uh, UDP identified by a port number, so service gives the specific ports. For example, uh, 1024, then usually UDP. TCP, connection-oriented, it is reliable, and also port number. So, uh, what is socket? There's a physical socket that you can see at your home. Uh, socket is end point of a connection. So socket hole can be identified by IP address and port number. Uh, so what happens here in the seven layer, see upper that is uh, application layer, user application layer. This is user application layer. In the trans transport layer, this transport layer, before it comes to transport layer, well, altogether it's, it's about port. So in your program, in your program, uh, because your programming is a very high level, you don't do your program in this uh, system level uh, routine, like bind, send to, receive from. Well, actually, uh, in our socket programming, then we need to use this, right? But in higher level application programming, we don't really need this. There may be another level of uh, the language that, that you can use, but internally it can be uh, decomposed into many of these uh, low-level language, say send to. Then, then it some, somehow in your operating systems, see this is a user model, user mode, or there is a kernel mode. There is a, some system routine available where there is a socket descriptor also. So that socket descriptor understand what this language is. Accordingly, it goes into the socket layer and set up uh, some of the data sets. Okay? So that travels from this point all the way down to through the transport layer, okay, network layer or link layer, physical layer. So th they're all the in opera operating system layer. This is the user. And, and then bottom here, there is a physical layer. Through this physical layer, it, it reaches to the destination. It comes back up here through the port. Uh, and, and the message is already in the operating system of your destination. So the, that operating system also understands by looking at the head of files what it should do. So 
the way it was packed, it is now unpacked and they put it in a uh, buffered data. And then at the receiver side, there's a corresponding language available, which is the receiver from, send to and receiver from. Outcome of this function will be the data or message that was originally originally uh, created at the source side. So that is recovered completely. And then the application handle this message. Meantime, in the operating systems, between socket descriptor and port number, we need to have some bind, okay? So that your message and header can be bound together with the, the port number. And then it goes down further, all the way down to the physical layer. Okay, this is a uh, basic concept of your socket programming. Okay. So what is a socket? It is an interface between application and network. If you want to communicate with the outside from your application, then you need to create a socket. But high level application development do not do really socket, but in socket programming, you have to do. The exercise that we are doing in this module is socket programming so that we need to take care of, for example, those instructions, send to, receive from, bind, all those things need to be done. The socket type dictates the style of communication, okay, for example, connection oriented or connection list. What does that mean is that are we going to do for TCP or UDP? Okay. So this gives you some idea about the, the difference between TCP and UDP. If you are using TCP, then you need to have these uh, sockets, sock underscore stream. Okay, this value needs to be used. If you want to set up UDP communication, then you need to use this value, SOC digram. Okay, that's a value. So from your application, uh, depending upon TCP or UDP, and packets generated in both ways. And if it is a, a TCP, then it's a connection based. So it, it is, it knows continually, it goes where. Okay? That is, uh, TCP case. On the, on the other hand, the UDP case, 
it send out and there is no connection okay and when the other wants to send out again then uh, quick send out and then unbind like your uh, web uh, clicking right if you click then send out and receive data and that's it and there is no connection it just until the next click oh we looked at this right all the ports uh, Available. Uh, binding function. This is this is important, right? Bind the function. What it does is that uh, if you use bind, then it associates and resolves a port for use. Okay, it's a bind. So. Function takes a socket ID, an address of the port, and the size. This looks, looks like a C code, right? But we do not do a C code. So status, uh, it tells you whether it succeed or failed. As, and socket ID is an integer. And address port. Uh, it's IP address and, and port of the machine and entire size. So SOC digram uh, if only sending no need to bind right but if you want to receive, then you need to bind. Socks, this is UDP, right? Sox stream is used to by TCP. So destination determined during con, so connection set up, and don't need to know port sending from during connection set up. The real code is, is, is following. So Fox, uh, for, for a, a SOC stream, which is a TCP, then connection occurs between two kinds of uh, participants, uh, passive or active. Passive, then wait. Active is connection and, and, and sharing data. Once connection is established, passive and active participants are similar, so it doesn't really matter. So what happens here is, if it is a uh, TCP, then you need to create a socket. This is a socket, socket creation. It's nothing but class uh, object construction. You need to object of socket needs to be constructed. And then you have to bind that socket to uh, a specific uh, a port and IP layers. Okay, so both server side and client side, you need to <coughs> create socket and bind. Server side, you have to you have to listen to the message coming through the, the port. So receive from needs to be uh, set up first. While at the client side, you need to send, you have to send the data to, uh, to the server. So this is a program, this is a simple code that, that we will do. See here, socket is created. This is 
is a socket object. Object created. We call that S. So S is nothing but a socket object. That socket object needs to bind to a specific port. Okay? This is server side. So server open that port. And then some details following. On the, on the other hand, uh, uh, client side, client can communicate with the server through, what is this? UDP. Right? If you do UD, UDP, there is no bind. You simply send it to. Uh, client then you need to connect because it is connect based connection based right when you do connect then the port number that's opened by the server you need to use that so this is the TCP TCP client. Okay. So that type of things will be done uh, next class. So you can expect that we will implement that. Okay. In Python. Further, as I said, we'll create not only one client, but multiple clients. They can request data to the same server. But if we have uh, overwhelming client request, then there may be a denial of service. You cannot create a client request manually uh, that many. You have to create another program to access, to request, automatically, like your botnet. In that way, server may be able to deny the request. So we will do that also. Any question? If you do not have a question, then we will meet in face-to-face -face in two weeks. Okay. Next week, <laughs> I'll meet you. No, you will meet me uh, over the videotape. But uh, the week before Thanksgiving, we'll meet again here. Question? Sure. The bind, the bind. Which, let's say you use an application like Netflix, right? You're using, you're trying to stream, you have to bind, but what if you go to the UDP side of it? No. No, right? You don't bind. Mm -hmm. No connections. So well, it's a connection, but, but you don't need to physical uh, connection based uh, communication. No. No. Look at the code here. Yeah, uh, this is UDP based. Only, it's not connection, right? No, it's simply, simply, so simply, simply send. This address is nothing but that address, and data is, data comes in here, we simply send it to. What applications 
Not, not connected with uh, any application, but our coding itself. Okay.